चाहे वो किसी की बच्ची भी हो बकरवाल की बच्ची हो शेड्यूल कास्ट की हो राजपूत की हो इंसान की बच्ची थी और हम फ्यूचर में अपनी नस्लों के लिए ऐसे कातलाना निज़ाम को रियासत में नहीं चाहते महबूबा जी जवाब दे हमें कि इस रियासत से इन गुनों को सामने ला करके ख़त्म न किया जाए हटाया ना जाए Hello and welcome to News Click. There are a lot of developments that are taking place in Jammu and Kashmir. An eight-year-old girl was raped. That was followed by a series of protests. Indo-Pak border is again heated up. To discuss the issue, we are joined by Gautam Navlaka, a eminent human rights activist who has been following the issue of Kashmir since more than two decades. So let's start from this uh, rape incident that took place. Uh, government, instead of taking actions and ensuring that a proper judicial process is followed protesters were booked under uh, nsa uh, what do you have to say about that now the interesting thing is after the uh, the girl's dead body was discovered and there were marks torture marks on her body one would have expected the police to undertake an investigation and track down the perpetrators of this heinous crime instead of which they delayed taking any action and it's only when people began to protest that they woke up to it by the time they woke up to it their attention was more towards thwarting the protesters rather than investigating the crime that has taken place and this is what we experienced i mean the news click story about this makes it very clear uh, <coughs> what has happened now hiranagar has also been a center of other kind of protests in the past where the hindutva elements have been emboldened by this formation of the coalition government and especially in jammu parts of jammu region they have been on a rampage and the police has been more or less soft peddling crimes uh, committed by them and activities that they have been undertaking you know threatening people local population especially targeting the gujjars and bakarwals so this the girl herself comes from from brari angan in in uh, south kashmir her family originally is from there and like all nomadic tribes in jammu and kashmir they travel during the winter months they move to the south towards kathua and this is what the girl's family were doing i mean when they uh, camped near hiranagar hiranagar also happens to be one of the centers where a lot of uh, um, uh, conflicts have taken place last year and they have been reported also uh, where the targets have been the gujjar bakarwals one fears that this rape uh, and killing was not just a one off incident that it may be part of a larger design unfortunately so can you throw some more light on this design that you're talking about why this series of attack on these two specific committees that you are talking about well uh, one is of course because they want them to be ousted from land which is suddenly become more lucrative that is part of the thing see lot of gujjars and bakarwals were shifted here from the border areas and they were provided alternative uh, uh, you know location near hiranagar hiranagar also turned has become the center where the land is now being targeted for setting up the uh, the new all india institute of medical sciences that government of india has promised to jammu and kashmir so land related issues have been at least at the at the at the core of this of this conflict that has been there and where the hindutva groups emboldened by it are trying to set the terms uh, to their for their i mean which would be advantages to them and would uh, disinherit Uh, and disenfranchise the gujjars and bakarwals let's come back to the issue of uh, assembly and a lot of commotions have been taking place there various issues have been raised uh, when it also comes to the relationship between indo pak uh, indo pak uh, uh, dialogue that has to be initiated there is also no progress on that front even after uh, uh, nia's uh, nsa's met outside the country of two different country uh, of these two different countries 
uh, interlocutor has been also appointed, but there also seems to be no development on that front, if I'm right. So, I mean, what's actually happening when it comes to this uh, legislative part of Jammu and Kashmir? See, take it in, uh, uh, let's take a look at the, the border flare up the, around the line of control as well as in the international border. Now, since the BJP government came to power, this border has become very volatile. And it's part of their policy, which they claim is meant to serve a lesson for Pakistan and make it uh, exorbitant for them to engage in so-called anti-India activities. Uh, and therefore, the shelling, the so-called uh, uh, strikes inside that have taken place, uh, so-called surgical Surgical. strikes that have taken place, etc., a part of that supposed to be that build-up to send a message that things are going to be very different and a new normal has, has been created. Unfortunately, if this was to serve as a deterrent, it has failed miserably. Uh, there has been no end in sight. Uh, the ceasefire violations continue from both the sides, shelling continues, and civilians in particular are the worst affected on both sides of the border. And these are ordinary people, villagers, who live till their land, so their livelihood is affected, and they've been forced to migrate, and they've become displaced. Schools have been closed, so children are losing precious time. Education, you know, education is being denied to them. This continues and there is a lot of concern cutting across all the parties, barring BJP. Cutting across all other parties, barring BJP, are united on what this issue that the, 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 that this volatile nature of the border is, is turning Jammu and Kashmir into a hotbed and they fear that it may result in another uh, war, uh, so-called limited war or a a long drawn out war between India and Pakistan. And it's the Kashmiris on either side of the border who will suffer, civilians who suffer primarily. So assembly has taken this issue up. Even the state government is on record of requesting the government of India to heed the warning and to to do something about it, to bring the level of of violations down, to undertake some kind of a diplomatic uh, negotiations, merely for the fact that, you know, the two national security advisors meet uh, somewhere outside the subcontinent to hold their talks. One doesn't know what is happening with them. I mean, it could be turned into a routine fashion where they want to send a message to the world that yes, they are trying to do something about it and therefore the national security advisors meet. But on ground, we seem to see no change, no perceptible change. But what's happening also with the appointment of interlocutor, is there any development on that front? Has a dialogue process been initiated? Nobody expected. I mean, it was very clear when uh, when the government of India itself, after (laughs) appointing uh, the so-called interlocutor, uh, subverted this appointment by making it very clear that there is nothing that they have to uh, they have nothing to offer, and uh, Prime Minister Modi is on record of ridiculing even this talk about autonomy, uh, comparing it to and uh, to uh, that even talking about autonomy becomes anti-national. So there is nothing much that one can expect. Interestingly, Dineshwar Sharma. <laughs> has requested the Ministry of Home Affairs to pull up some of the TV channels who have created an unbroken record of of whipping up hysteria, uh, hatred of Kashmiris and particularly Kashmiri Muslims. I mean, their main task seems to be to run down the Kashmiri Muslims one way or another and to create some kind of hysteria and hatred towards Kashmiri Muslims. And it's, it is Dineshwar Sharma who's requested the Ministry of Home Affairs to please pull up these TV channels and remind them that this is actually becoming counterproductive. Right. Now, the interesting thing is the Ministry of Home Affairs, on the other hand, says that we, we believe that 
uh, that this is their freedom of uh, expression. expression and speech and we can't interfere with it. But the same Ministry of Home Affairs is also on record, officially on record, of asking the state government and the central government to deny advertisements to Kashmiri media, especially the Valley media, in the argument that they engage in anti-India propaganda. So where is that commitment to freedom of speech and expression? I mean, why is it that they only are mindful about the freedom of speech and expression of, of the most uh, hysterical and hostile media that this country has experienced in recent time? But they completely ignore uh, and the clamp down on, on the freedom of expression and speech of the local media. That's a good point actually you're making. If you look at uh, any of the news channels, there's a continuous propaganda which is going on and uh, the media houses are talking about weapons, how important are weapons for India, what is our armed forces strength and all that. So it's like they're sort of trying to create a situation like, like a war-like situation they're trying to create. Let's come back to the last point that I want to make and uh, See, everybody knows that a dialogue is needed and dialogue from both the sides is needed. Uh, but there's a, more, there's a bigger political question here. What happens to this coalition, the BJP, PDP coalition, because they're on a tough war when it comes to this situation. What's the way ahead for them? Well, they'll trudge along. They have, no, they have no hope. They have such high stakes in perpetuation of their own self-rule. Self and, uh, and the power and pelf which they enjoy, I don't see them uh, uh, doing anything different than what they have done. But I like to b b bring to your notice something else also simultaneously. One of the most alarming thing that uh, people in India have not responded to adequately and taken seriously is the kind of pronouncements Indian's army chief has been repeatedly right. making about Kashmir, which is astounding. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that when you have as an army chief, a person who exhibits such appalling uh, sense of understanding and uh, complete indifference to, to historical facts, then we are in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a terrible uh, situation actually uh, of our own making and this all-out operation uh, is going to end up uh, becoming an all-out operation to, to actually undermine whatever little uh, uh, the opportunity there is uh, for, for the Indian, uh, uh, Indian government to, to seek a political resolution of the conflict. Let's hope, Gautam, that the uh, political class in the country reach to that uh, conclusion that we are talking about and they have a resolution for this entire issue. We'll be keeping, keeping a close watch on this issue and we'll be coming back to you on such issues further. Thanks a lot for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching NewsClick. Keep following our website and our Facebook page.